We had planned today to talk a little bit about the uh, fantastic work you've been uh, doing here in the library to transform it from, I'll say, a, a traditional library mm -hmm. space um, from a couple of years ago to something that's more vibrant. And I know you wanted to, to share about uh, that journey today. So I guess our first question is, um, what are all the things you did to transform the library and bring your vision to life? Shall I start? You shall. Thank you. Um, the big thing for us uh, when we wanted to transform the space was to get rid of the, the stationary computers, the desktops, and start bringing in more mobile devices. And we found with the increase in mobile devices, we also had to increase the electrification. Um, so we have more outlets in the, in the room, we've put power bars out for kids, mm -hmm. and um, the transformation is still continuing. Uh, we're hoping to, to make some other big changes. We're noticing that it's not just about the devices anymore, it is, it is about the space. Mm -hmm. You had something to add, I think. Well, and we, um, Carla, put together an art gallery inside uh, the library space between the stacks of books. It's quite beautiful and it has a rotation of student artwork that's both um, thought-provoking and mm -hmm. inspiring. And so students can see their own work and see the work of their peers in a way that they couldn't have seen it before. The library has always been incredible about housing student work. I really like that it's right in between the books um, and that there are benches there where students can sit and work and collaborate. And I think the groundwork for moving toward a digital library has been in the works for many, many years. Mm -hmm. It's just now we actually have the mobile technology to support that thinking. Um, and so certainly we've said also we're inspired by the technology hub that is Waterloo Region. So being out at the Google head office or at Shopify or at Perimeter Institute, looking at the ways that those environments actually create collaborative space. And I think traditionally that was seen as sort of aesthetic bonus, you know, oh that's a nice looking space. What we're realizing is a nice looking space can actually foster learning and collaboration in a really creative way that allows our students to work differently and think differently. So it's not just about appearance, it's about what it can do because we've now seen the way that students can interact with technology and space um, in, a, in a more transformative way than we've seen before. Mm -hmm. They actually seek out the space now, as in it's a preferred location, yes. it, it's welcoming and they just want to be in it. And students who you might not have seen in the library five or ten years ago are here yes. and they find a space here and they find an environment that is welcoming but also that, that they can work in because it works for them. Mm -hmm. Well that's fantastic. I think this is my third visit to the library here at WCI <laughs> this year and I must admit each time I've been here I always take note that it's a real buzz of activity with mm -hmm. uh, people coming and going. There's a mm -hmm. variety of learning activities happening mm -hmm. from uh, groups to collaborative to mm -hmm. um, individuals working mm -hmm. on things. So you, I think you're you're right. You really have achieved that vibrant space, and it's great to see the the use increasing. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I, mm -hmm. It has, and it's even right now um, feeling a little guilt. It just the number of kids that are out there right now mm -hmm. with only one teacher supervising. <laughs> <laughs> well, and their reliance on you. So if Carlo has to be away for a morning at a meeting, is that the reliance of the students being like, is Fusco here? Is he here? Is he here? Because they rely on your expertise and knowledge with their technology, with the space, with access to information. Um, and so that open, I think, environment um, allows them to feel that comfort in asking for help. And we joke about when I was in high school in the 90s, my <laughs> librarian had, you know, was British and old-fashioned and would say, you know, your voices are carrying, right? And so we weren't allowed to talk. And we weren't all, and so just it's a shift for teachers and educators too to come in here and see the space differently than what we were used to as students because we were used to that quiet space and so it's a shift as well for us to be comfortable with the buzz because that's very different than what we were probably raised with. Right, and that's why the, the term library learning commons is so important because we're not just a library. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea of the learning commons is this is where you come to learn. So we try to create different spaces for different students. We have a quiet area, we have comfortable chairs, uh, and we have areas for, for group work, so we have tables. And just the way the stacks are set up, it actually isolates the areas so that students can be talking in one area without disrupting students in another area. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, we, we do have to have our due diligence. We do have to walk around and make sure that everyone's following mm -hmm. the rules. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, and that's, that's <laughs> part of any uh, sort of school board facility, so that's, mm -hmm. that's not unusual. Yes. Mm -hmm. But certainly great to feel the energy mm -hmm. um, that's happening in here. Mm -hmm. And I know part of your vision was um, <clears throat> shifting away from the desktops as you mm -hmm. identified yeah. in your opening comments. So what's in the library now? 
Um, we are now uh, 50 Chromebooks and uh, 16 iPads, mm -hmm. and we are also experimenting with uh, with uh, Chromeboxes. And students have really taken to this. Yeah. Uh, we keep 30 Chromebooks aside for teacher sign up to use as a as a computer lab because we are in the early stages of one to one. So our grade 10s, 11s, and 12s still need access to to devices. So I keep 30 devices just for teachers to bring their kids down here to work with. But I keep 20 behind the counter for kids just to take at any time, like the iPads. Mm -hmm. The Chromebooks right now, I'm, I'm keeping a tight rein on them because I actually want real numbers. And I'm finding about every 30 days, those 20 Chromebooks are signed out a thousand times wow. every 30 days. And it's unbelievable. It just shows that those senior students want the devices just as much as our junior students do. Mm -hmm. And the, the iPads are even more interesting because I sign them up for a week at a time. Yeah. And, and students are, are shocked a little bit and they find out they get it for a week. And then, you know, if the demand isn't there and they say, well, can I sign up for a second week? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just like, wow. And I, the, the weirdest story, though, is I had one student sign it out, use it all day here at school, and then bring it back at the end of the day and saying, well, my parents wouldn't want me to bring something this expensive home. <laughs> <laughs> the fear. Yeah. Well, well, it's building trust, right? Yeah. Um, and certainly I know, you know, in many school boards there's been customs of loaning expensive equipment, such mm -hmm. as, you know, video cameras right. or perhaps musical instruments. Mm -hmm. This is really no different. It's just yeah. mm -hmm. uh, technology that, that can be used in many environments. I think a trumpet actually costs considerably more. <laughs> yeah. I right? Think so, <laughs> so uh, and we yeah. give musical instruments to kids all the time. Mm -hmm. So we think there would be typically a fear of damage and even we're recognizing that students have that too like you're giving me this thing and I get to take it away and I'm, I'm responsible for it um, and we haven't had any damage right. we haven't had any loss we haven't had any um, any issues with the students respecting the equipment and caring for the equipment it's and been so a full year now I think that Fantastic. just watching the use of the equipment mm -hmm. and, the, and the, that trust that you have with the student and that they respect the piece, I think that fear of us, and I would admit like, oh my gosh, right, we're giving them these expensive things, has just really come back to show us that they value it, they respect it, and they appreciate mm -hmm. having that opportunity. And, and we've expanded a little bit mm -hmm. where I now when a student demonstrates need, I'm giving them Chromebooks overnight yeah. to, to finish work. Yeah. And they've been fabulous at returning it in the yeah. morning before uh, the first period starts. Great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, you've certainly uh, taken on a nice customer service uh, mm -hmm. approach yeah. to running the library and meeting the needs of today's students. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, such an important consideration in the planning. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Now your school, along with um, the rest of the secondary schools mm -hmm. this year, benefited from uh, the system rollout of one-to-one -one Chromebooks for our grade nine students. Yeah. Has this impacted the library facility? It has, but in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm seeing fewer uh, teachers booking the lab space because all the grade nines aren't needing it, but I'm finding the number of students in the space hasn't really changed. Um, an example yesterday, I even had a, a grade nine teacher sign out the space just because they wanted a n different location uh, for their class to work. Mm -hmm. And they brought their Chromebooks with them. Right. Mm -hmm. And then allowed me to sign mm -hmm. out the more Chromebooks to other kids that were already here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's impacted the way that we understand labs, mm -hmm. right? So you're not limited, right? Especially the grade nine teachers not limited to a lab space. You can travel with your lab anywhere. Um, and I'm excited for that to roll into the upper levels. But I think here, um, it hasn't, like you're saying, it hasn't changed the number of students in the space. In fact, it's, it's made more technology available to other students. Right. To and I think that approach really lines up with one of the, the key foundational uh, pieces of the Futures Forum project, the four any's, anytime, mm -hmm. anywhere, mm -hmm. anything, anyone learning. Mm -hmm. And when you have technology available mm -hmm. and you can just use it as appropriate in the right context, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. I will notice, I have noticed one big thing. With the desktop computers, there was a, a, a barrier sort of set up, yeah. and kids would hide in behind them. Mm -hmm. There was and, two tiers. And they right? would hide behind them playing so games like and being boisterous. They couldn't see each other, and yeah. the teacher couldn't keep an eye on everybody. And they'd be, yeah, I, I haven't seen that same behavior. That's, it's disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, the gaming thing that, that may have been an issue it has disappeared, but kids now spread out and take up the entire space instead of just trying to congregate in locations where they mm -hmm. can't be observed. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that changes, well, students were sitting down to a computer because it was there. So we'd sit down to the desktop and go, well, it's here, so I'll just play a game or I'll do it. But now it's like, well, I have to actively sign out a Chromebook or be with a class and get a Chromebook. And so they have to ask for something and sign out. And I think that puts a different onus on what they're going to do with it. Right, so it changes that. Well, it's here, so I'll just log in and play. Right. Um, in terms of as well, we used to have to reserve the computer space, and this was always tough because students would be coming in and out of the library and want to log into a PC and a desktop, and we'd say, oh, no, 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 you can't because that's reserved for a class. And it set up this barrier all the time with, I think, students going, oh, great, well, I can't print this thing or I can't come in and I can't work on this because we had to hold the computers. We don't have to do that anymore. They're in a case um, and they're ready for that class when they come and students have access yeah. to their technology. So it's not a no, So no, your strategies no. remove the barrier in effect. Yes. That's right. And it's even funnier when, when you see kids that are already here working and their work is all spread out mm -hmm. and then the teacher comes in with their class and the kids just Move fit themselves around. in because yeah. of the mobile technology. Kids are choosing where they want to work. And so these kids don't have to move and mm -hmm. we're not having to, to say, to oh, pick up all your out. stuff and move. Yeah. It's like they're all intermixing. So mm -hmm. here you have a grade 12 doing chemistry surrounded by grade nines doing history. Mm -hmm. And it used to be, you know, move away from the, this is a reserved space, which even though we were trying to protect the space for the teacher coming with the students, it was a negative mm -hmm. interaction with the other student who just wanted to do some work too. <laughs> you know, it's, we've, that's been removed now, and it's amazing how they're, I think, inherently so respectful of each other and going, oh, that class is here, so others stay here, I'll just move over here so they can have, and they're really organically doing that. They yep. don't need to be told in oh, the way that's that fantastic. we used to have to police it, you yeah, know, and we don't great. anymore. Well, that's perhaps a nice uh, segue to our next <laughs> point of discussion. I mean, you've obviously had a vision about the use of technology in the library and mm -hmm. how you envision the space. So how does this connect to what you see as the ever-changing role of the teacher? Mm -hmm. I gotta let you start this time. Me? Okay. Because I, I have a strong opinion and we've discussed this so often. And you have a nice way of saying it. Well, we both are <laughs> talking about that shifting role of the educator and, and educator, you know, the teacher used to be sort of the all-knowing expert in that subject area and I think that expertise still exists and that's what's amazing is you know teachers still have this expertise they want to share with their students and this passion they want to share about their subject area and that's what's incredible in secondary you can really specialize with your students and say this is what I did my degree in and I'm excited to talk to you about this what's shifting in that though is student access to information and research in their hands in their pocket in their Chromebook that they can do with you in the moment and so we had a quote we worked on together <laughs> which we said um, I'm going to read a bit. The leap to using the technology is not as great as the leap to releasing that control of information. And so that's what I'm even noticing that. I'm like, what? You know, because they're going, but I just looked this up and. And that to me is so much more enriching than me just knowing information. It's what else can we learn and how can I guide you in your critical thinking and problem solving. And so we're thinking that shift as educators is into that skill set with any subject area is because there's so much information helping our students navigate that information and be strong critical thinkers and problem solvers and guiding them. So the role of the teacher is mm -hmm. um, we're trying to teach those skills and as the librarian teach the skills to yeah. figure out what information is valid first of all mm -hmm. because there is so much and, and to wade through it but information is not knowledge and the role of the teacher now is to how do they create knowledge mm -hmm. uh, from all this information mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of an interesting job because it's changed before teachers were the ones responsible for disseminating that information now it's it's ubiquitous I just want to use that word today. it's a good word it's uh, it, it really is it's just everywhere and the kids have access to it on their phone on their Chromebooks it's mm -hmm. just everywhere and the teachers role is about knowledge building now and those two key skills of critical thinking and problem-solving mm -hmm. once we have students with those skills, it's completely transferable to every subject area. Yeah. And so what we're doing, I think, is we truly are creating those lifelong learners because those skills are useful and apply mm -hmm. to everything. Mm -hmm. oh, fantastic. So I think our last point here for our discussion this morning was just around, um, we've seen a, um, I would say, exponential change in uh, the use of web-based tools, in mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. uh, Google Apps, as uh, mm -hmm. one of the options available in the province. Mm -hmm. And so, how has that played into uh, school life? Wow, <laughs> it's really kind of funny. Um, we we are promoting uh, device agnostic 
um, behavior with students. So they can pick up any device mm -hmm. and have access to all their work. Mm -hmm. So they're working with iPads, they're working with Chromebooks, they're working with their own personal devices that they bring in. Mm -hmm. And it has made collaboration so easy. Students are really embracing the, the sharing culture. So most people once would, might say, oh, well, does that in, increase plagiarism? And I think the answer is no. What we see are students helping students. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a lot of that. And, and just access to this stuff has made things so easy for students. Mm -hmm. so well, we were talking to about Marshall McLuhan. And the yeah. medium is the message. It has changed the way that students behave. It has changed the way that educators behave. It's changed the mm -hmm. way that we learn together. Um, and that's what's incredible to me. Um, and I'm experimenting in my class too with giving students access to information and marked information and shared docs with them that they can get anytime, anywhere, can be shared with their own families and caregivers if they want. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that it isn't just in the hands of any one person, but that they have access to collaborate, it has changed the behavior of our students. And, and so McLuhan would love that. <laughs> and I think it's also changing the quality of the work that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, because of the easy sharing, what we're mm -hmm. seeing, in my opinion, what we're seeing is students publishing to blogs and to YouTube and, and other public facing um, um, webs, web, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, no. Web publishing type mm -hmm. of environments. And so students are doing a much better job at their writing, they're mu doing a much better job of video production and polish and production value. It's just incredible mm -hmm. when they're producing something that's not just for teacher consumption, mm -hmm. but for consumption by the world. We're seeing the product increase to. It, it, it's just it's actually mind boggling. Mm -hmm. I, we had students just pop in today just to mm -hmm. show us uh, a documentary uh, interview that mm -hmm. they're working on, and this is for a grade eleven English class, and it was just stunning of the quality that they were able to to put into this project using nothing more than an iPad and some good ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, wow, that's great, and when it comes down to it, um, authentic learning opportunities, mm -hmm. the critical thinking, the analysis, and mm -hmm. students having really a choice of um, how they, they build their, their presentations and how they, they share their thinking uh, mm -hmm. back with the, the educators and the, and the class, mm -hmm. um, and the world, really, mm -hmm. through, through mm -hmm. um, blogging and websites and social mm -hmm. media and so on. It's, it's really a, kind of a game changer on education mm -hmm. and uh, from my perspective, so exciting yeah. um, to see that students are leveraging this mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. rich learning environment. And I think to that understanding, they, they are a part of an environment and part of a, a cultural generation. They're used to having an online presence. They're used to having their own say about who they are. And I think why shouldn't then their critical thinking, their problem solving, their mm -hmm. work in education also be shared at their comfort um, to a real world audience and showing them that connection between what we're doing here and why it matters when you leave here. And that transferable skill set I think is what makes the technology so incredible because it allows them that window to mm -hmm. share. And I think as time progresses, going back to the Marshall McLuhan thing, <laughs> we're going to start seeing this technology become invisible mm -hmm. and it's just the tool that the kids are using mm -hmm. to still to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think education is right now because it's at its infancy of integrating all this technology we do talk a lot about the technology but i do see students for them it's becoming invisible mm -hmm. it's just what i need to do what i want to do right perfect mm -hmm. well thanks so much Thank for you. uh having this conversation this morning i don't know if either or both of you have a quick closing comment but uh fantastic discussion <laughs> Do you have a closing comment? Please? No, I'm very good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the chance to but, chat with you but, this morning. Uh, yes, follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing your uh, experiences in uh, re revisioning the library. Thank you. Thank you.